Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live and welcome to another episode of Adobe Live Week of Women. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Izzy, brand designer from Ottawa, Canada, and I am here with the wonderful Rachel Taylor, print and pattern designer from Liverpool, UK. And Rachel is also a best selling author, award winning creative director, and mentor. So Rachel, you do it all. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was such a, a nice introduction. And hello, everyone. And thanks for tuning in. And a big thanks to Adobe for inviting me. Of course. So how are you feeling today like, before we get uh, like, Good. into it? Yeah. Excited. I think um, there's going to be a lot of insight that's going to be useful for people. Um, I put a lot of prep into the video. I had great help from my team. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. So I'm excited. I can't wait. So Rachel is known for her quirky, creative approach and daring use of color. So I know that it will be an amazing session today. So hi to everyone in the chat. And of course, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you haven't already, thank you. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow our Instagram account at Adobe Live to make sure that you stay up to the latest stream and all of the updates and much more. Uh, right now in the chat, we have Garrett, we have Voodoo Val, we have Robert, we have Francisco, we have Penny. Oh my, it's a full house today. Thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the moment that we have all been waiting for, Rachel, please take the stage introduce yourself and let us know what we will be working on today. So we're going to be diving into ten and doodles, into digital patterns and, and prints and patterns. I'm going to be really easing you in and making it really accessible for you. And you're going to really, really enjoy it. And um, I'm going to, like I said, go through all of the steps. I'm just going to talk you through kind of my career now, if that's OK, and some some highlights and some bits. So um, as Izzy said, I do lots of things. If someone asks my job title, I'm like, gosh, where do I begin? First and foremost, I'm a print and pattern designer. My role has evolved over the years to kind of art direction and creative direction, which I adore. I am a mentor. I am I'm the co-founder of online design school, Make It In Design. We've been going 11 years now. Wow. I also do one-to-one -one creative coaching, yeah, 11 years. And I think we were the first dedicate a course out there to surface pattern design but now we do like lots of different things and work with different experts and then recently I launched a book so I called power up your creativity so I've done gosh so many so many different things it, it's it's crazy but I'm very very grateful very proactive and someone who goes for things all of the time so on screen here you can kind of see my quirky patterns they're always bright textured kind of layers I love working in Adobe Illustrator, which you'll see in a moment. I come from a screen printing background and I wanted to kind of oh. bring that style into my work with digitally. I wasn't really trained at university digitally. I was a little bit self-taught and then learned in industry and picked it up as I went along. So I'll just go through my slides. So next slide here, again, more bonkers color and pattern, different projects from kind of cars. This is just a mock-up of a building. I wish this was real. Commissions for sculptures, ceramics, notebooks. I've kind of done so many different things. And then on screen here are my doodles. Some of them are kind of quite abstract. Some are more, a little bit more realistic, but generally I'm quite stylized. I do come from, you know, an art background. However, I really got into kind of retro kind of styles and motifs and things that are fun and playful. And I do a lot of textures and mark making. I often work in black because that comes from how I used to work when I was a screen printer. And then mm. I translate these into Adobe Illustrator, which you'll see in the demonstration. And I just want to show you, you know, the power of a doodle. You can do so much with a doodle. So for those that are watching who are like, I cannot draw, I'm telling you now, I will be able to show you how to turn your doodles into magic. Okay, this is so <laughs> fun already. There's so much to look at. Oh, good, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you like, like it. Um, and then on screen here is a seven day florals challenge at Make It In Design. We often host um, drawing challenges to encourage people to get drawing. Again, you'll notice my stuff is all kind of blobby and dots and quite quirky and all of that. <laughs> and then this page I thought was a good thing to show you because you can see, you know, the original drawing and what I've done with it. And then, you know, it's like 
I think the one in the middle with the um, the black design with the leaves, it's so simple, isn't it? But I can do so much with it. More examples here. And then there's lots of different swatches from my kind of digital portfolio. I'm known for florals and nature, love abstract shapes and things like that. Again, textures, mark making. Some more images here on screen. Again, lots more. Love colour. It's like a big colour explosion. When I first went solo, when I was reaching out to the UK market, there wasn't that interest in colour. So I went to the US and kind of mm. Australian markets. But now colour is a bit more accepted over here in the UK. And some more. And then, as I mentioned, my book, Power Up Your Creativity, again, really colourful. It's got 10 kind of key chapters that guides all, creative, all of the creatives, all of the things they need to know. And then just a little snippet of the insides of the pages. And then with art direction, style and work, I've done things from like magazine covers. You can see me there as a cover girl on those two magazines and just helping the photographer with styling ensured that we got that shot, those shots and grabbed the cover basically. So I just love everything. I love the whole creative process. I live and breathe creativity. I have a colorful home. I drive like a pink car. <laughs> I'm learning Spanish. Um, I'm not going to say that on the video because I'm, I'm not so great with my accent. Um, my son is called Blake Lennon. He's named after John Lennon and James Blake. I love Cuba. You'll see that in a minute with my work. Um, I used to do acting and dancing and things. And as I said, oh, wow. I drive a pink car. <laughs> so yeah, so that's it about me. Oh my gosh, there's so much to take in. <laughs> there's a lot. Um, there's I, I was... a lot. It whiz through because there's there's um there's a lot to kind of fit in and a lot to get in this video. So I hope that wasn't too much info too quick. <laughs> no, if anything, I think it just like prompts us to go and dive deeper and look at everything that you do. And this is a real treat that we uh we, oh, we have you on here today. Great. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you guys very quickly my website and then we'll dive, I think, into the into the um the demonstration so makeitindesign.com is my online teaching um and classes we have a free class right now five ways to monetize your designs there's a podcast which is great so do check it out and then i will just go onto my other site and then we're ready to go for the demonstration i think and then this is my own website you'll see the background here is the one that i'm going to be teaching in the demonstration and here you can see my licensing work, my coaching, um, all of the things yeah, that I do. Very, very colorful kind of person. <laughs> it's very Absolutely. rare that you see me wearing anything black, you know? It's, um, <laughs> I'm very much known for, for you know, the, the, the color. I feel like I didn't dress up the part today. I should have wore maybe something a bit more colorful for the street. <laughs> Oh, no, it's nice. It's nice to have the um the the contrast. People always say after they've met me that they they wear more color, yeah, and work with more color as well. <laughs> I mean, what a great influence! Just looking at your stuff, it is so inspiring. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And then on screen right now is is the design which we're going to be diving into in an Illustrator, which I'll be opening up Illustrator in a moment. The reason I picked this design is it's called Havana Night. It's inspired by my love of Cuba. You can see the drawing here. It's simplistic. It's, you know, drawn with black pen. I'll show you the show you the pens if that's okay. So I tend to work with um, the, I'm a big fan of the, the Derwent brand. And they have these line makers in different weights. But for this particular drawing that I've done, I actually use the the beryl broad pens because it's kind of a lot of kind of coloring in as you will my son says you're just coloring in but you know that's what I do and this this motif was inspired by um some street art I'd seen in Cuba I went back to my hotel and drawn it I often draw when I get back home and go home with a camera full you know full of images and um yeah, it just it just inspired so much. The color palette is very influenced by the streets of Cuba. Um, I use this design on so many different things. This is the original drawing. So I will hold that up. So lovely. There for you. Um, I often do work in sketchbooks, but when I'm on the go, sometimes it's just whatever. 
I can get my hands on. I'm not precious about things. I think when we work in sketchbooks, sometimes we can feel a little bit restricted about things being so, so perfect. And I'm all about celebrating the imperfections. And I think that brings a nice quality to our work. And you'll see that when I'm in the demonstration, it is not about being perfect. It is about, you know, your unique style. I always say, create the work you want to attract. You've got to have joy in your work. And I think that really comes across, you know, with, with your designs, particularly in prints, prints and patterns. So that's the drawing. Would you and, say um, that the fact that you do that is why people say that you have some sort of a quirkiness to your design because you do allow for the, uh, those imperfections, like in the, I, in the drawings? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I work digitally, um, which obviously you'll see in a moment, but for me, mm-hmm. I still love to hand draw and, and scan in and bring bits in, even though I will create some digital shapes as well. And I, and I think just, yeah, the imperfections, the textures, not worrying about everything being like super, mm-hmm. super perfect. You know, the drawings that I shown you in the demonstration earlier, some of them are more accurate. Some of them are just very, you know, simple and kind of expressive. I'll grab a couple more. Um, so By sometime... the way, well, while you do that, I just want to go to the chat because people are, are like reacting to uh, oh, your, your <laughs> good design. Good, good so, oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> So Thanks, we have uh, uh, Enki here saying, I learned Spanish in school about 36 years ago. Time sure flies. <laughs> um, so here, uh, Sin is saying, I am happy you're learning Spanish. Uh, Lindsay is saying the book is great. Um, oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, it's uh, Han- Haneki. Again, sorry if I butchered that. I do Zen doodling also in black pen and then edit it in, in Illustrator and Photoshop. So you're oh, at the right place. That's good to know. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 that's, that's good to know that other people are doing that as well. I think the freedom that you get when you just work in black and then know that you can apply the color in, in Illustrator is fantastic. And I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. Once I open up Illustrator and I open up the swatches, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's loads of colors. And Sometimes I'm influenced like from photography, but sometimes it is just a natural selection in Illustrator. So I'll show you a couple more drawings and then I'm going to open okay. up the Illustrator bits if that's okay. So there's Perfect. this one yes. here, sorry, hit it on the microphone, um, which is just kind of like little weird, you know, abstract shapes. So I'll put it in front of my face so you can see it a little clearer. Um, different weights of pens. Again, the Derwent line makers, big fan of those. And then I use kind of the barrel pens for kind of coloring in, as you will. Okay. And then another one here. Oh, look at that. Which, you know, sometimes I'll be honest, they just come out of my head. It, I just, I'm, yeah, I can just doodle freely. And I used to work um, in-house for lots of different companies, which, you know, I enjoyed, but I, I, I felt a little restricted. And I think when I went set up as a freelancer and as an individual company, I just felt like I had more freedom. And I always say like, it sounds a little cheesy, but like my inner doodle was kind of set free. (laughs) But I think that's true. (laughs) I think um, I just kind of came into my own and then, yeah, was there's no stopping me. And then look where you're at now. I mean, that's amazing. So you never know what that can, can do in your career, right? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, trusting your instincts when I worked in-house at like a couple of companies I at one point even though it was a nice job it wasn't quite what I wanted to do I almost felt like do I still want to be a designer mm-hmm. and that was the big you know alarm bell for me of like oh my goodness why am I thinking this so yeah I just went for it and I think I've always followed my intuition and trusted my instincts and kind of yeah gone with how I feel and try again create the work you want to attract I say to everyone you you can really kind of you know attract those things if you want to be doing um prints and patterns for stationery then have that on your Instagram feed or your website and and you will attract that type of work so I think yeah that's that's really really important so in a moment I'm going to be um talking you through how I took that drawing into a repeat and then also a placement print but this might seem a little strange the fact that I've just got these circles on my screen (laughs) it's because I always teach people the principles of repeat with just a simple geometric because it's just so much easier it just allows you to grasp it and then as we progress I'll open up all of the different files if that's okay so I've got them all here numbered at the top 
So if that sounds all right with everyone, I'll, I'll get started. I think is that good, Izzy, for time? Oh yes, I think everyone's on the tip of their chair. They want to uh, to get started with you. That's great. Okay, and obviously it is live. You know, I I am prepped. If I knock anything out of place, in a way, I think sometimes it's a good thing because you'll see how I fix it. You know, it happens every day that we knock motifs or we have to check things with files. So I think it's all, a, you know, a good learning curve. So I'm just going to go on to to the to the the one that I pre prepared, and then I'll go back to this file in a moment. So. The reason I always show people just with a, a simple geometric to begin with, so this is my tile, is just to explain basically a repeat. So there are many different ways you can do repeats within this program. The reason I work this way and kind of do it manually is because I feel like I have more creative control of how things are placed. Often with my repeats, patterns and designs, they're more fluid and quite organic and layered. And I like that I can kind of generate the look. I'll be honest that nine times out of 10 these days, I work with what we call placement prints. So I will just set something up like this, which isn't a repeat pattern. It's kind of just a, just a, um, a concept. But if it's anything that is printed on a roll, like gift mm. wrap on a roll, bolt fabric, fabric by the meter, wallpaper on a roll that's when you're going to need a repeat tile because it's like printed on a, a cylinder now different companies will have different sizes of how they print do not worry about all of that illustrate is great you can save obviously editable files we can change repeat sizes i tend to set up my repeat tiles just as a square kind of um, format for demonstrations to show you guys because that's kind of the easiest way and this particular document um, artboard has been set up at 300 millimeters, so 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And kind of 200 to kind of 400 is, is the common size I, I tend to use. Um, again, when my designs are selected, if they're not on a repeat, I can just work them up really quickly. If they are in, in repeat, sometimes I still have to resize them. So I tend to work on that kind of um, spectrum for sizes. So the principles with a repeat is anything that is on the outer edges needs to be taken care of. So I always say, take care of the outer edges. And then basically it's like having a little party in the middle. You can do what you want with the <laughs> middle. So I always say, worry about your outer edges. And then, and then, you know, we, we, we can, we can go through it. So I will be um, in a moment showing you this kind of version, but for now um, we're just on the geometric. So as you can see here on the top left, that circle is coming in on the top right. Same on the on the top of the row here and it's coming in at the bottom. And all of that is repeated around the edges. And I'm gonna show you this in a minute of how to do it as well. And then I've just thrown in a, a circle in the middle for good luck. Of course, this is so simple. It's very graphic and geometric. You can have so much fun with, with you know, repeats. And I'm going to talk you through um, how to do image trace in a moment as well. So you can see how I created the final design. But again, just explaining the repeat. So what I'll do is now, I'll just zoom out there. Is that's the finished tile. And here you can see that I've repeated it um, across to check the repeat size as well. So I'm just going to go back into the original and you're going to see what I'm doing. So one thing you need to know is make sure you know your documents, um, your document size. So a quick way to check that is go into document setup. I tend to go into edit artboards and then it will say there 300 by 300. So I know I'm working to a 300 millimeter square. Of course, you know, you might get given a different size like 380, 420, whichever. Often there is flexibility in the height of a tile, but it's more restrictive in the width. But for the demonstration, I've just stuck to a square to make it easy because I'm just gonna do a what we call a straight match repeat. So sometimes um, I will write in the, in the layers. So I'll go on here and maybe type in, um, sounds a little bit weird, but I kind of write little notes for myself because sometimes <laughs> I'm, it's just a little thing that I do. 
And then also, you know, if a buyer or client takes my artwork, it just means that the files are a little bit more organized and, and things like that. So I'm going to take this circle here and place it on this corner. I'm just doing this really quick because it's a demo, just making a, a circle. So because this kind of sits off this outer edge and spills over the top, I need to bring that in at all, all four corners, basically. So I go to Object, Transform and Move. I type in the, the dimension for where I want it to go. So because it's a 300 mil um, artboard size, I'm going to press Copy. And that's just repeated that across. Now be really careful that you don't knock anything out of place. It can happen if your repeat tile doesn't match, then you can just you can just tweak it. So then um, I'm going to now repeat these down. I'll just move these out of the way. And again, just repeat that step. I'm just going through the process in quite a detailed way for you guys. Um, I tend to work a little quicker, um, but trying to go through oh, 3000, that's not going to work. Um, okay, so we've repeated that all around. I'm now going to just grab this one. Because that's kind of spilled out here, I need to bring it here. So again, object transform move. Zero in the horizontal because we're not moving it horizontally and where are we? 300 in the vertical. If you were going the opposite direction, you would just put a minus um, in, the, in the box there. And there we have that. And then another one here. And then we've we've nearly um we've nearly taken sorry, knock on the menu there. We've nearly taken care of our edges, and then we're nearly done on that bit. And then 300 there. So it's really about understanding it. There's a bit of math going on here, yeah, right? so, mm -hmm. which is really funny because I'm terrible at maths. Like <laughs> I am awful. So I am the worst. And, and, and with an industry, you know, I was the person people would come to, to fix repeats, set repeats up. Hey, we've bought this artwork. that's like super complex with like a million snowmen in arms and it's photography, put it in a repeat. And I don't know how that I kind of seem to, this is this is the only maths that I like <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's nice and illustrative. You know, if you, I, I just don't like maths, but for some reason I'm, I'm, I seem to be good at this, this bit. So just a random circle in the middle. So essentially we've taken care of the edges. As I said, a party in the middle, you could make this really layered, have loads of different things. I'll show you in a minute um, how I get to this because we're gonna dive into image trace in a moment as well. And, but this is kind of the principles of a repeat. Now, the next step that I do is to pl um, place what's called a clipping mask on this, um, on this layer. So now for the clipping mask to work, to cr create a repeat tile as I do in this way, you need to make sure that everything that you're containing within the clipping mask is on one layer. Now I know when I select all of this, it's all on one layer and it's indicated here in the, in the layers icon. So I'm just going to um, drag outwards on the geometric tool a transparent box. Now I need that to be um, 300 by 300 because that is the size of the of the square I've set up for the repeat. It all has to be exact. And again, if your repeat size was different, you would just you know change it 380 by whatever. Um, and then the main thing you need to do next is, is to align it to the artboard. So I'm clicking on this tool here and then over here. So aligning it um, on the vertical and the horizontal and checking it is on the align to artboard option, which it is. I know that is at the front because I've just drawn it on top of the other bits, but I'm just going to go to object, arrange, bring to front just to make sure and to show you guys that is like a step that I do. And then simply um, drag over it to select it, object, clipping, mass, make, and there we have our tile. So now it's the moment of truth. Have I done this right? Have I knocked anything? Um, <laughs> and I'll show you 
show how I do. So we, you want to check your tile. You need to know that when you um, step up your repeat tile, that it's it's not gone weird. You've not knocked anything. Sometimes I knock it and I've been doing this, gosh, like forever. So don't worry if it happens to you. And then just press copy. I'm just going to do the same going down. And then in a moment, I will zoom in. And then again, on the vertical, if you were going the opposite way, as I said, you would just pop the, the minus um, in there. So let me just scroll that back up on screen so you guys can Look see a little bit that. better. So that's basically the principles of a repeat. Now, I will zoom in because it's a circle. It's quite obvious to see if I missed it, you'd notice. But if there was lots of motifs, you know, you have to really like zoom in and, and check it. Mm. I've not put a color on the background or anything on this because it's, you know, it's just a this it's a, a quick part of the demo. But that's essentially what you would do. So in a moment when we go through the um, how to image trace and then I show you repeat, it's literally just the same basic principles. The only difference with the one that I've got on screen here is that it's actually my one is um is layered. So you can see here, I've done the dotty layer mm. and then I put the flowers on top. I chose to work in the two layers that way because it just made the whole repeat process way more simple. But again, because my designs are more busy, I try to blend them and not make it look really obvious. Um, sometimes my designs have even more layers on and are like, super super busy so you know this one is a little bit more simplistic for me but i will yeah talk you through that so i hope that's okay so we'll dive into um i think the kind of image trace explanation next if that's all right how are we doing on the chat izzy so we have uh kerwin who's saying yes patterns because your boy forgot how to make them <laughs> so <laughs> you're definitely good. yeah at the right place uh, we have jeff too saying great pattern and then um kerwin again saying oh wow that's crazy good and and you made it look so effortlessly it oh, shows good. that you have been doing this for such a long time oh, good <laughs> thank you so much do you know what i'm gonna do now because you're saying i've done it effortlessly it was easy to demo because it's a geometric and i've done this for years and years but i'm gonna do something now and show you what to do when a repeat goes wrong i think because i think we're doing okay for time so before mm -hmm. we move on to the next bit, I'm just going to go back into my original, delete all these little extra bits that I've got. As I said, there's different ways to do repeats with an illustrator. I like to do it this way. This is the way I teach just because I love, you know, to have that kind of direction and control with the, with the tile. And it's just a way that translates really, really well for my design style. So I would just go to, if to release the clipping mask and release the tile we've just made i would go to object clipping mask release and then that is is that is there right now so i'm just going to lock that a moment just so i've got that in place so when i check it again in a minute i'm going to just maybe i don't know add a color um on here and maybe just throw a little few more like weird weird shapes in Again, if you ever go back and edit your tile, just be really careful you don't knock some some other bits. So I'm just going to give that a colour also. It's a bit of an unusual colour, but we'll, we'll go with that. So I'm going to keep that there. And then essentially that needs to be that colour. I haven't changed that out of position, so I don't need to do anything with that all being well. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to leave that one there and then maybe pop a another one i don't know up here and we're gonna forget to repeat so essentially this new kind of pink one i've thrown in for good luck we're gonna totally forget about that and forget mm -hmm. about this green one which goes against all the principles take care of your edges as i said you can have like a bit of a, a party in the middle so mm -hmm. um I don't know, I'm just gonna make this really weird now and throw like a, a star <laughs> in. Just just to give you like a strange tile where we can spot mistakes. Okay, so essentially what I need to do now is do the whole clipping mask thing again. We know it's gonna go wrong because I've left something in here I forgot to repeat down. I've left something in here that should, that should be actually repeated on all four corners. So it's gonna look a little bit strange, but it's just to show you guys, um, you know, what happens when it goes wrong as well. 
And I always like to say there are no mistakes. And sometimes when I do things and knock things and it goes a little bit weird, I'm like, oh, actually, that's quite cool. And even though I might have to fix a repeat, mm. it, it it comes up with like a different idea. So, right, we've done that. Okay, so, so it's going to go a little strange. Sorry, my, my button keeps catching. Um, okay, so it's still a tile at 300. So object transform move. Again, you know, there are quicker ways of, of doing this for the demo. I've really kind of slowed this down. Okay. And then I am, um, I won't be selling this pattern design anyway. It's, um, <laughs> it's um, a very, I just find teaching with a, a geometric, it's like the easiest way. And then we can advance, advance on the lap. Oh, I've done something strange there. Let me go back. So I think I know what happened. So yeah, so zero in the horizontal and 300 in the vertical. So let's zoom in on that. So this is what happens when a repeat mm. goes wrong. It's like, oh gosh, where's that? Where's that? It's all gone a little bit strange. So that's just something you, you know you need to take care of. It's not a big deal. So I would simply just go back and delete all the bits I've just checked. And then just gonna release the clipping mask. And then I'd be able to identify, hang on a minute, that's gone a bit weird, delete it or duplicate it down. So in this case, I'd need to go object transform move again and bring that down on the vertical copy. So that will repeat now. And I'm just gonna delete that one because I don't like that color. <laughs> and then that there so then that would that would that would then work you know because we've made sure we've taken care of all of the edges so yeah that's the the basics of kind of repeat making so we're going to move on to a think image trace now unless you need me to answer anything on the chat or anything izzy no actually we do have a comment from uh, lisa marie saying thank you for the slow step-by-step -step introduction so helpful and oh, then good. Voodoo, Voodoo Val added, I agree, very easy to follow. So you're an excellent teacher. <laughs> oh, great. That's good. And that's me, who's someone who's not good at math. So I like <laughs> that you guys have, have said that. And I think, you know, if, if I can do it, someone who is like not a numbers person, like numbers make me stress, anyone can. And I think for me, with everything I do, whether it's demonstrations, teaching, is that I just want to make people realize that things are a lot more accessible, you know, mm -hmm. than, than you realize you, you can do it. You can, if you have a doodly style or drawings or say some, maybe some silhouettes that you've created, you can turn them into magical things from one motif. You can really monetize your designs and make you know, so much magic from, from that um, one, one motif. And that's, yeah, that's what I love. I've just realized actually I've not got one of my um, files open, which I'll open to, towards the end because I'll show you this um, presentation mm. sheet where you'll see how from a main print, I can make simple coordinates as well. Mm. So I'll go through um, all of that. And there's just, you know, there's, there's so much that you can do. It is easier than you think. It just takes practice. And I think the way in which I do it um, and, and my drawing style is, is, is like relatable to a lot of people. You know, it's it's... It's not some Absolutely. huge, big detail thing. Of course, you can work with lots of different motifs. So if you're doing like a, a 60s floral theme, it might be that there's like seven or eight different flower heads. It might be that some of your prints just have one icon repeated, which in this case, mm. this one has. You'll see in a moment when I go through the image trace, how I do it. I've image traced this to get the black artwork in vectorized. And then what I've done is because it image traces the black and white, I've kind of, it's not stolen, but it kind of is. I've stolen the white bits <laughs> out the middle to get this bit of detail. And then if you look at the, um, the this file here, you'll see that, you know, the dots in the background are from those extra mm -hmm. bits. And then that kind of shape that sits behind is just borrowed from the sensor. So there literally is like so much you can do, you know, from, from mm -hmm. a doodle. I'm just going to grab a couple more of my, my drawings. So, you know, it could be, let me find another one. Sorry, I have so many on my, my <laughs> desk. 
would you say too that it's really important to master the foundation of it because you showed us like the principle right like the foundation of it in order to be able to build on top so once you have that then you can go a bit more whimsical and add more details and kind of go crazy with it yeah definitely that's a good point so it, it depends on how you work i mean if repeats scare you practicing you know the geometric kind of way um or a very simple repeat to begin with and then kind of like riding a bike isn't it the more you do it the easier it gets you'll, you'll gain more confidence but some people go the other way where they get so stressed about a repeat tile mm. that it kind of puts like a big creative block in front of them and i always say to everyone it's more important yes repeats you know are important and teaching this demonstration but a lot of the time i will create what we call like a placement print like this, like a concept. It goes on a presentation sheet and that is enough for like a buyer or, you know, a client or someone wanting to license it mm. because there might not even be a requirement for the repeat. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm getting creative block, create a piece of art like this. If then your buyer and cl client requires it, you can easily then set up a repeat or sometimes the, the, the client or the you know the buyer will will say oh we've got an artwork team we do it anyway so it, it can be very very varied i think if you're a print and pattern designer it's important to show both you know have have some repeating patterns that are technically set up correct have some that are you know just concepts as well um and you'll, you'll see all of that i'm just going to open up one other file that for some reason has disappeared off my off my screen <laughs> and then um and then I'll go into image trace because this will make sense now. I'm just going back to a previous uh, comment um, from Lisette saying, Rachel's book and course, all very inspirational. Oh, and thank you. We had Leah saying, Rachel Taylor is an incredible mentor and coach. So thrilled to be coached by her. Oh, Leah, you're going to get me all emotional on this video. Do you know when <laughs> I do these live videos and it's with our community, they're so lovely and that the they're going on to do amazing amazing things and they they tell me like you know i built up this portfolio this happened this client and i just get really like teary i'll try not to <laughs> get emotional in this, in this video but i just love to know that um you know that the, the teaching works and that i'm helping people get results because i wouldn't be doing this 11 years on if it was not helping mm. people and for me, that's the joy. I love, love designing, but I realize I've got, you know, a, a talent for teaching as well. Mm -hmm. But let's see what you think when you watched all my video. No, hopefully all will be good tonight. Um, but yeah, I love sharing the tips and the tricks and, and being honest and, you know, saying when things can go wrong, but it's okay. And you can do other things and all of that as well. So I'll talk about that. So again, it, with, um, going back to the question about, you know, repeats, you can create what we call like a presentation sheet like this. If there was a show like Certex, Print Source, Blueprint, this is the type of thing, you know, agents will exhibit or obviously if you represent yourself or you create and say a pitch document. And this is enough, you know, for people to see the possibilities in, mm. in your design being commercial. And then you can see here, as I said, with the, um, the image trace, I borrowed the bits from the middle, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. And then I I made these kind of coordinates from it. So coordinating prints borrowed from the from the main art. This is what we would call kind of like a placement print or a surface pattern design concept. It's more of the, the main design and, and the hero print. And then the ones below are what we call the coordinating designs that kind of go with it. So if you had say like a gift bag or some stationery, it might be that, you know, the main print is on the front of the gift bag, up the sides is this, or maybe that's on the interior. Or you've got, say, like a mix and match range um, of stationery or it's fashion. That could be like the line and fabric, and then that's the main print. So it's just giving a buyer or client that much more. And I love, love making coordinates. Some designers present the work in different ways. This is just, you know, how it works for me in, in, in my style. So we're going to go on to the image trace magic now, if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> absolutely. So image trace, I absolutely love Illustrator for image trace. I think back in the day, it used to be called live trace and then something, it was called something else. And it's just kept evolving and kept getting better. And I was like, you know, I was learning the software 
And I was like, how can I get my black kind of drawings, my screen printiness onto a screen? And I do use Photoshop and I do use InDesign, but 90% of the time I live in Illustrator. The reason I love Illustrator so much is I just find it quick for clicking around. It just feels more intuitive for me. It just feels really, really streamlined. But of course it works better, you know, when you, you're generating art in vectors. So I was like, how can I work in Illustrator without bringing in like loads of JPEGs and stuff like that? Um, so I discovered Image Trace and was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and then a little tip, which you'll see in a moment is, you know, um, you'll find certain pens and certain drawing styles will work better with image trace and there's different settings. So you need to find the setting that works for you. Because I've been drawing like this now, gosh, for like 15 years or something. I know everything I draw 99% of the time image traces perfectly. If it is something, let me just grab an example of my little pile of pile of drawings that is say like super detailed. So I'm gonna show these these um, butterflies. I don't know if you okay. can see it. I'll put it in front of my face so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> so, so maybe we can zoom in on that for a little bit. There's a lot of details. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So if you've got like, I don't know, something like that, it's a little bit more detailed. Sometimes when I image trace it, I lose a little quality, but I know in this case, when I was drawing it, that it's gonna be like a Photoshop. Um, mm. you know, um, kind of piece of work that I create. So I know when I'm drawing it, which program I'm going to use 99% of the time. I tend to um, always work in Illustrate, Image Trace. I often like the result of um, the Im how Image Trace converts my work and into vectors and things. I, I, I think it works really, really nice. So again, that whole thing of, you'll see in a moment, this Image Trace is absolutely beautifully. It's, it's like exact you know it's perfect yes yeah it's great but if for any reason it didn't i still most of the time um keep that version because i'm like oh actually i i like that result i like that it's it's not super super perfect you know but if mm. i was wanting like loads and loads of detail and um, really really fine like really really faint lines i would naturally go to to photoshop and I find that a lot of designers favor one program or the, or the other. We all work across them all, but for me, Illustrator is a thing. So when I found Image Trace, it was like, oh my goodness, this is like, oh, like Christmas or something. This is great. Cause I, <laughs> it was just, it was just, yeah, it just made my life and made my life mm -hmm. easier. It's a game great. changer. <laughs> exactly. And I, I you know, I, I, I love it. And I'm just going to show you one, one thing again with it, with a drawing on screen. So I'll, I'll hold it in. I often, this is another little cheat. I often only draw half a butterfly because what I find is oh. when I put the pr when I put the pressure on myself to draw perfect symmetry, gosh, it's hard. I was once videoed asked to do that, and it was it was so much pressure. So <laughs> I will obviously duplicate that and you know have it um, repeated. I still draw the body. Everybody's like, why don't you draw the body separately? But when I draw the body separately. The butterfly goes a little strange. I think having the body mm. um, just makes me draw a little bit realistic in my own kind of weird um, abstract way. So, so yeah, so I do that with butterflies as well. So that's another little thing you can do. And of course, you just take the body off and then duplicate and across. Duplicate, the yeah, yeah. Perfect. Great tip. Um, so, but again, I go for the perfectly imperfect look, I would say. So, image tray. So you're bringing your drawing. I scan it at high resolution. Um, so, you know, make sure you do the same. This kind of pen weight works really, really well for me. It's the the heavier um, barrel weight pens that I'm showing you at the start of the video. You can't okay. really see that very well anyway on camera, but it's the barrel broad pen. I um, sometimes do what I call like a ghost outline with a pencil and then draw on top. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna clean my throat. <clears throat> too much talking and then I will um go in through the the details or color bits in um but nine times out of ten because I work so freely and kind of intuitively I just get the pen out and like stop, dr start drawing you know um, and that that's how I work so you bring in your drawing into Illustrator as soon as you click on it this menu appears at the top so it's image trace 
Now there's all of these different presets. You'll need to experiment with the one that works best for you. But if you work in a similar way to me with kind of black and white, um, you can work in lighter weights of pens, you know, that also works really well. I've done tons of designs in Illustrator with a finer weight pen. Um, but heavier pens work really, really well on the default setting. And then all I would do then is just go to image, sorry, image trace, and then press OK. It's on the default setting. And then what it's done is it's turned that into vectors. So the thing you need to remember to do, which a lot of people forget, is to um, press expand. And then what that's done is it's drawn all of the black bits, but also all of the white bits as well. So the white bits inside it's drawn and the black bits. Now, often I don't need the white bits. I'll just click on them, go to select same fill color. It selects it all and hit delete on the keyboard because I don't, I don't need all that. But sometimes I'm like, oh, that bit in the middle is going to be really cool. I can like mm -hmm. do something with that. So my head is already thinking, I'm always like, what can I get out of this motif? You know, how can I, how can I utilize it? So I like to spend, even though sometimes my doodles are super fast, sometimes it's like a 20 minute drawing, sometimes it's like a two hour one. I, I like to put the energy in the doodle because I know then there's so much I can do with it within, within Adobe Illustrator. So in this case, I wouldn't delete all of the white with the, the, the white arrow. I would just, um, I'm just going to delete that outer edge. And then I'm going to just go to um, select same fill color again, kind of pop that to the side. Now, can you see it gave me the, the um, so let me move that out of the way. It gave me this outline. So there's a few cool things you can do. It gave me kind of that outline. So I could have that silhouette, silhouetted shape as well. Um, but I just actually want the bits. So just let me go to ungroup. So... And sometimes you can do weird things and knock the wrong mm -hmm. bit, but that's okay. You know, you're just, you're playing around. So can you see, I've essentially now, if I wanted to, I could make that into like a, a silhouette as well, which just go back there, sorry, which, um, which could be used in the pattern. Now I didn't use that in my pattern. I'm a bit like, why didn't I use that? I don't know, because that would have been quite cool. <laughs> and then I've got this, these other bits, but I, I kind of just want the, the center really. Mm. So I would just go in and just delete the bits I don't want. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't need that bit. That's not that exciting. Gonna delete that. Oh, them lines are quite nice. Might want to use them. You know, when I just play around, it's like I might even think, oh, they're, they're quite cool in the background. Oh, that's gone a bit weird there. So we go back, <laughs> knock something. It, it might even be um, that I'm like, oh, these these lines are really nice. I keep knocking the vector points there. And um, I might want to, that one doesn't want to do it. I'm just going to delete that one. Um, and it might be that <laughs> I want to use the center and, you know, the, these bits as well. And you can click on these individually. You can, of course, you know, select over them and, and group them together if you want to. So then you can move them together. You might want to group these, for instance, and have them grouped. Of course, if you want to, want to ungroup things, you can just go to the op opposite, click on it. Mm -hmm. And then go to ungroup. So and then, while and you're you grouping, Oh, sorry. So I just want to say while you're grouping, we're uh, a bit over 40 minutes in this live. Okay. It's crazy how time is, is it going does. fast. It goes quick. <laughs> right? It goes so it goes quick. <laughs> very quickly in the Adobe sphere. Um, and uh, I just wanted to um, go to the chat. So we have uh, Lisa Marie who asked, what is a hero print? And then mm -hmm. Lisette answered, and we'll see if, if, uh, if ah, that's okay. true. Lisa answered, Lisa... Oops. In designing a hero print is your main pattern, usually one that has the most details, then other designs are made to go with that design as complementary patterns. So I guess it's yeah, going back yeah, to this. Yeah, perfect, perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, it's the, it's the standout piece, the, the, the main pattern, you know, that if this was like a, a mini kind of collection concept, that would be, you know, the stronger design because it's got more components in it. Again, buyers sometimes want to see patterns of like lots of different motifs. Sometimes they're like simpler motifs. For me, some of my 
some of my most popular prints have been simpler or they've had maybe say one motif like this and I've really utilized the assets within it. Other designers might have to have say eight or nine flower heads and that's more popular for them. I really mm. do have a mix within my portfolio. But yeah, it's kind of this um, this main print and then um, we have, yeah, like the coordinates that kind of go with it that are a little more suggestive. If you were pitching to say a fabric company, you generally have maybe like six to 12 designs. Within that, um, you know, you'd have, uh, you know, a, a certain amount of main patterns and hero prints and some coordinates. It might be like, say, eight kind of busier patterns, main patterns. And then if it was a collection of 12, say four coordinates or six and six, obviously depending on who you're working for and, and the client. Um, but yeah, this is generally like the gist of it. This one um, isn't in a repeat, as I said, it's more of like a concept. Mm -hmm. You can have a mix of repeat patterns, just placement prints. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, I need a little bit more time to grasp principles of, of repeats, you know, I want to just play and experiment, then go for that. You know, you can watch the geometric bit again another time and then and then understand that again. What Work in a way that excites you. And just know, because Illustrator is so great for pattern making, that, you know, you can you can do so much and it's it's so easy and it's so accessible. I think so many designers get so scared of print and pattern. There's mm -hmm. nothing to be scared of. And it's like, it's such a big area within the marketplace. And obviously mm -hmm. you can tell I'm really passionate about it, but <laughs> I love print and pattern. I'm like the print and pattern cheerleader, but it, you know, with the advantages of digital prints and, um, you know, just printing in full color can look amazing. Digital print is fantastic these days. And when I started out, it wasn't so great. So, you know, it, it's it's just really, really, really cool. So anyone can go for it is, is what I want to say. So I'll go that's, back onto this. <laughs> that's great. I just want to say a few more things because it's, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot happening here. I'm, so I'm we, doing good for time. I'm all right with my demo where I'm at. Perfect. So, all good. <laughs> so Jeff is saying this process is fascinating. Oh, um God. Lindsay said, I need those pens to play with. So this is going back when you were showing your doodles. Yeah. Um, then we have Charlotte saying, Rachel is an amazing tutor and she is honestly the best. So inspiring and is always happy to sit down and talk us through techniques. Oh, gosh. I don't know if that's, <laughs> um, I do some guest lecturing at um, universities and I'm not sure maybe if that's mm. Charlotte who I teach. So shout out to um, the University Centre um, St. Helens and University of Chester, if those guys are watching. I've got a feeling maybe that's, Char that's Charlotte, but it could be another Charlotte. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, all of the Charlottes in the world. Hey, thank oh, you for being here. <laughs> yes, thank you. I saw have... that some of them said they were going to watch. So yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, there you go. We have Lindsay saying for the, the patterns that we you have extracted saying like, oh, that's actually nice itself itself. And it's you're absolutely right. Then Voodoo Val saying, love it. The details are so unique. Um, and then we have a question from Ray asking, do you use separate objects on different layers or is everything on one layer for this? So if a design is, is quite simple, I will often just work on the one layer. But what you'll see um, in this one is when I was trying to set up the repeat tile for this, so I've gone from, you know, oh, I've got this placement print, I want to put it in repeat because I was getting some um, fabric by the meter printed. I wanted to keep the essence of it and the energy. And because it is a little bit, you know, busy and quirky, I was finding it hard working with the elements to, to repeat it. So what I will do in that case is I will um, set up the, the separate layers. So I do the same thing as I did with kind of the geometric, you know, taking care of the outer edges and um, then the middle, and I will just work in the different layers. And then as long as you know, um, I've done the clipper massing, everything is still on that same layer, that's that's gonna work. And then of course, then I've got the the other bit as well. So you can see, mm. you can see that there. Now I'll explain this tile in a moment, because you must be thinking, oh, she's got this extra extra bit here, but you'll, 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 see, you'll see why in a moment, because there's this little, piece and it looks like oh why have you repeated this flower here it's not even touching but it is mm -hmm. it just touch it creeps in here and that oh, could I have been it. easily missed because I when I was unclipping this before for the demonstration and when I was prepping I was like 
oh, do I need to show all of those bits? Should I delete those? And then I was like, oh no, that is that is in the corners, you know? Mm. So, so yeah. Um, so I just go back onto image tray. So I'm glad that you like how you can get the bits. Like, you know, again, from this, this drawing, which I'll be honest, didn't take me very long, but I was, you know, walking the streets of Havana for days to get this inspiration. <laughs> So it, it's it's a process and um, I love the fact that a lot of my artwork, there's a story or there's like a journey, you know, you know, amongst mm -hmm. it. And um, so even though this, this process is simple, I'm absorbing stuff constantly and I'm inspired by different things. And without realizing it, I'm already kind of designing the pattern before I've even drawn it. It's just, mm -hmm. that sounds a bit weird, but it's true. I'm kind of like, I don't know, being inspired and, and and thinking yeah of all of the the different things i can do i suppose and getting ideas so it even though this bit is quick it, it probably is more of a lengthy process than a, than a than a realize but be a sponge you know absorb things around you take your camera sketchbook there is no right or wrong way of doing print and pattern design it's it's you know finding your style and the, the place the gap in the marketplace for you as well so then we've got all these these bits um, I call them like, you know, the accidental bits, this bit here. I didn't even actually realize that that was going to make a silhouette. Sometimes it's like a happy accident and I'm like, oh, okay, that's quite cool. I'll go with that. <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, it can go the opposite. You try it and it, it backfires and you're like, oh, actually that's not quite what I thought, but then you learn mm -hmm. from it or maybe, you know, an, another I idea is generated. And, and that's what I love. And my process is very much, um, about that. So then from that, I've then gone on and created, this is, this is how I work. So obviously in the demo, you know, I've made sure my files are a little bit more organized because that's, if I was sending it to a client, that's how I'd send them. But when it's just me in my studio and it's a concept, you know, I've got my music on, I'm a bit messy, you know, there's stuff all around me. Um, yeah, I like stuff. I'm a stuff. I'm like a stuff person who has a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I I just love things and color and like to be surrounded by pretty things and um, unusual things as well. And um, I'll bring stuff in and just experiment. So these colors that um, I have on screen are essentially colors that really re-inspired me from walking the, the streets in Havana. So, you know, you see a lot of kind of teals, peaches and oranges and yellows. I mean, anyone that knows me will know, like, I'm obsessed with, with this kind of colour palette. Like, I've always had, like, a really colourful home. I want that kind of holiday vibe. Um, we always say my patterns, we, we use, like, a bit of a slogan, patterns to make you happy. And, and, and that energy, like, I want that energy to come across in my work that was from my kind of screen printing roots. And Illustrator and Image Trace, I don't know the person that invented Image Trace. I don't know if like who, <laughs> when they designed Illustrator, thought of Image Trace, but that's a pretty cool person. And I want to say thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, so like just, you know, have an Image Trace and then it just makes it really fun and intuitive. And like I said, I can bring that energy in. I can I can work in layers. So I would typically then, you know, bring in, bring in my um, different bits Sorry, my, lay my layer's locked. That's why it's not letting me move it. I will bring in, you know, my different bits. Maybe um, just pick some colors sometimes from the color picker. I'm a big, also it might be that I bring a photograph in and like I'm inspired by that. Sometimes I just go into the swatch libraries, open up the, sorry, get my menu up there, open up the color books and then go to, on the wrong one, go to the <laughs> Pantone CMYK coated palette. Now I'm often asked what Pantones, you know, what color profiles, all of that. And that can stress people out as well. I often work in CMYK. I know if it needs converting, I can do that like really, really easily. I'm a big fan of this Pantone CMYK co coated swatch palette. I just like scrolling through that, honestly, is like, it's like sweet. It's just, it's so exciting. And I'm like, oh my goodness, these colors are amazing. And I just love, love that. Um, I have the, the Pantone swatch book to match. I only own one book, you know, everyone's like, do I need to have all these different things? No, you don't, you know, work in a way that suits you. And obviously, you know, that's affordable. 
Um, and then I will just pick my colors like that. So if I was, you know, cl clicking on my original motif, it might be that I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to look for a nice teal that is maybe inspired by my photography. And then I've got that there. And I'm going to sometimes just pick different colors and dots. The color palette for these dots that you see kind of in the background and on this artboard were actually, um, the, the arrangement of the colors was inspired by how I just created these swatches. I sometimes I was like, oh, they look quite cool together, those little dots. And then what I did was, sorry, I knocked something in. What I did was, was just wanted that kind of random feel and energy from those colors and the kind of the arrangement. And then I just colored up the dots in the background. And that's how I came up with the concept. Again, using the, the bits that I borrowed here, so, you know, um, this, this isn't grouped, but I'll just group that. So, you know, that bit here, essentially, I've somehow joined the dots there, but anyway, um, that bit there is, you know, is this little bit here that is essentially the bit that I've used in the background. So what I've done is I've got this shape just behind that, basically, essentially there. You can work in different layers if that makes it easier for having your motifs behind motifs, or you can just go to object, arrange, bring to front, bring to the front, send backwards. It's, you know, it's however you want to work it is fine. Sometimes people find it easier working across the separate layers. Definitely in the, in the beginning stage, I work just kind of on one layer to begin with. It's all a bit messy and, I'm just kind of going with it and, and running with ideas. I often sometimes will maybe save a different colorway, a different version and have like a version one, two, you know, trying out coordinates, as I said, like this as well. So that's kind of how I get to this development stage. So now I'm just going to open up the repeat. So what I need to do is essentially I'm going to be taking that development idea into repeat tile. Now we know there's a bit of space in here, but because I need to, you know, step, have all of the motifs repeating around and I'm doing what we call like a straight match repeat. I need to make sure again, I take care of the outer edges and make sure things are repeated across. So I kept the scale quite similar. Sometimes when you're doing a repeat, if you're finding that when you're repeating the motif across, if it's not working, change the size of your motif, experiment, you know, with, with the scale. So if this is, you know, over, over here, I'm just going to bring that in. And then I was taking that across on this side and it's not quite working. I could just, you know, make it smaller or bigger. So, um, I'm just going to check the, the artboard size on this. Um, this one is, where are we? 300. So again, that's why sometimes I write it in my layers to remind me, oh, I'm working on a 300 artboard. Of course you can just check it. Um, so again, you know, if I was wanting to take that in a repeat, of course I would have to have taken care of the background because all of the background on this isn't repeated right now, but you know, I would be doing exactly what I did with the geometric and repeating that across, but I would have to essentially make sure that anything that is off the edges is coming across. And sometimes the easiest way to do it is, is to just take all your components off, off it and kind of almost feel like, you know, you're starting again. And then you can you can refer back to your original development file, which is, you know, what I've got here. And then um, then you can use that to, to get, I'm just gonna put those back, to get to your repeat. Um, for anyone um, who doesn't know what I'm doing here, I'm just doing Command Z on the keyboard to go step backwards. So I've got that file looking like that. So yeah, so I will, as I'm creating the repeat, I will sometimes have the original kind of development on the screen because I want to emulate that kind of energy. I don't want to, I don't want to lose that energy and that kind of thing that I'm known for just because I'm putting it in a repeat, you know, so that this is what I do. So you can see, um, I've obviously set this up in a repeat. Now it's a little bit busier, so it might be like, oh, it, you know, is it a repeat? I want, I, it, you know, what is, she, what is she saying here? So of course the dots, they are in a repeat, but what I like about the dots and how I've done them is, 
is they kind of flow quite nice, don't they? It brings like a sense of movement and energy and like a, it just it just feels nice. Well, I, I think it does anyway. So then it, it's, you know, it's these dots here have been repeated here. Same principles of what we did with the geometric. Then they've been repeated on this corner, this corner, um, sorry, this corner and so on. These ones here have been repeated across here. The ones at the top have been brought down. Following exactly all the principles I taught you with the the, the basic um, demonstration. So that's what I've done. So, it, you know, it might help you if you want to work in layers. Like I said, it's, it's entirely um, up, up to you. So that's the dots. And then essentially my flowers, let me just go back onto the, the artboard because I've just got this little swatch to the side. Um, we've got the flowers repeating because again, the motifs are quite busy. I don't think it's super obvious with the repeat and I, I, I take pride in that really because I try to blend things. You know, you can see it's repeated, but I think it's a little bit disguised because of the dots in the background and all of that. So I'm just gonna scroll back over to here. So essentially this green, this green square I've got here in the in the background is just a duplication of this swatch. And I've re I've released the clipping mask just to show you guys for the demonstration. And again, as I said, um this this one here, let me just go back on there. I've got that locked. This one here, let me just take the dots off. This one here, um, it is a little bit like, oh, you know, did that need stepping? down there but it, it it did because you can see it's just hitting the edge of the square there yeah, it's only very just small super that, small that would have been like so easy to miss and and you know if you mm -hmm. miss it, it it isn't a big deal it really really isn't um you can just go you know like i shown you you just release your clipping mask go back so if if i'd missed if I'd missed that, I would simply go back on here, object, clipping mask, release, and be like, oh gosh, I missed that tiny little thing. I'm gonna go back, back and um back and do that. Um, and, and that's basically what you need to do is just again take care of the outer edges. Um, I'm just gonna move that over over to the side a moment out the way. Oh, I forgot to unlock the other layer. But I like it when things like that happen because it shows that you might do it and you're like, oh, why is that not moving? So unlock the other layer. Um, just going to get that out of the way just for a minute. I'm just going to zoom in on this one. And then um, essentially, as I said, if you needed to fix it, you would just go to object, clipping mass release. And then identify the naughty one that has gone in the in the wrong place and be like, oh, it's you. I'm going to get you and duplicate it or copy it and all of that. Then when I've done that, as I shown you with the the geometric repeat, you know, I, I take the swatch and I duplicate it across. I'm just going to show you with this one because it's a little bit easier for those that are completely new to repeats to, to identify what to do again because obviously it can be a little a little um busy on the other one you would just copy that across to check your tile works and then again on a busier design it's exactly the same i never do anything different just visually it's a little bit clearer for you to see you would just you know check that zoom in so I've just stepped up to repeat and that is what's called like a, a straight match repeat. And I often work that way because I tend to um, blend the edges of my repeats with by making them more busy or layered or I've got like organic stems coming in or something flowing. This kind of style of repeat works really well. Again, whoever you're working for, if they ask you to put in a repeat, ask them, is there a certain size you have to work to? Um, often there is restrictions in the width. So for instance, when I was printing gift wrap on a on a roll, the cylinder was 1200 um, millimeters. So my repeat size in the width had to be divisible into that. Again, this is maths, isn't it? I hope, yeah, I hope I'm saying this right. So it was like 300, 400, you know, that can, is divisible into the 1200. But 
it didn't matter in the height if I went bigger. So in this demonstration for ease, I've set up this tile at 200 by 200. But essentially, because there's flexibility with my manufacturer, I could make this 200 in the width, 280 in the height on the square. And then when you're stepping it across, you would just change the dimensions. So that's why it's useful to write your repeat size in your layers sometimes. Width is 200, height is 280, something like that. Um, and this flexibility. So if you find you're losing that original quality, then see if there is experimentation, you know, in, in the in the height of, of the design, basically. So then now I'm just going to go on to the repeat test. So you can see it repeated. This is a lot. My um this is oh, a wow. this is a busy design. So I'm just gonna go actually. So go into the development and go into outline mode. And you can see obviously that's the kind of vector, the drawings. Just go back to preview. And then the repeat, obviously, it starts to get a little bit more busy. <laughs> um, and then are you ready for it on this one? It's a lot. So generally on my computer, I just save the original swatch because that's all I need. The, the printer or the manufacturer or my client just wants the swatch. They don't need to see it tested. They don't ask for like the test file or anything like that. But I like to do them and then maybe take a screenshot of it or save it as a JPEG so I can show them how it looks like in a repeat and to show them that I've also, you know, checked the, the tile because you know, if you're sending it to, look how busy that is. Wow. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're, send, if you're sending it to um, a company. So for instance, I used to work in house for various companies and the managers would buy artwork off, say freelancers and things. I could be the person who's the repeat might have already been done, or I'm asked to do the repeat that opens up the file. And maybe because the layers are not locked when I open it, I've knocked it and I've knocked something. Or I've been, you know, mm -hmm. given the original swatch and I've knocked it. So this is why I like to um, do a screenshot of like a, 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 a test of the repeat to show that, you know, I have checked it and it's, it's all good to go. And then they know that this is how it should look. Because it has happened to me before when I sent it to a manufacturer that something in the repeat tile has been knocked. Maybe they've had to go in and edit the original tile or resize it or something. And it is chopped off like a little bit. So minor, they probably wouldn't notice it. But because mm. I know my drawings and my art, I spot it like immediately. I, I, it's like it's like I have a talent for spotting mistakes in a, in a way. <laughs> but I, 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 um, I spot it. So, you know, you can see here it's all repeating. I'll just give that a moment to get into focus. Um, so yeah, so it's really, really important to, to, you know, do that, do that check. Um, let's go back. And then, so that's the, the principles of the repeat. I was going to open up next, like a, a kind of a style and um, file that I have, cause I want to talk about how this design is inspired, like so many things, but I just yes, want to check in with you, Izzy, cause I feel like I've gone a million miles an hour into repeat <laughs> is everyone are we surviving are we are we doing okay so it's crazy how you were intuitive on talking about layers because we had questions about how oh. to layer and oh, you good. answered them and they kept coming in but you were just uh -huh. talking and you answered everything as you were talking <laughs> so right. like you're an, an, an amazing teacher <laughs> and oh, then Thank um you. everyone that is being the like they're calling each other out on the naming their layers properly right now. So they're being, there's a bit of a layer police happening. Right yes. Now. <laughs> and one, one thing I do want to say is you'll notice um, with my layers, you're probably thinking, why has she got like shouty capital letters? Um, I actually find it easier when they're in big capitals. Um, when I worked in house at like the likes of say um, the Hallmark cards head office, Someone who trained me, I'll give him a shout out. He's called Adrian O'Meara. He was very good at kind of, they call it like housekeeping of how to keep your files. You know, when you're a designer who works for a company, often, even if you've made the art and I've done the repeat tile, it will go to say like an artwork team who deals with the step before manufacturing. And you want to make their life easy. You know, I don't want it to be that they get my file and they're like, oh my God, Rachel's work is like giving me a headache. Yes. So much color and it's unorganized. So I will keep 
so you know for the demonstration it was easy for me to get these files because i always keep the original development file obviously because i teach and i know it's useful but i like to see where where the idea come from and then i've got like mm. the repeat but if i was sending this to a client again all they would get is the swatch it would be in a clipping mask it would be you know um essentially just this bit um I might, well, I do, I know I do. I put the repeats in the layers. I don't know, maybe if people think that's strange, but I, I, I like that for me. I put that in there. I, I try and make it useful for people and I name name the layers. I mean, Illustrator is a little bit easy with layers, and um, but naming your layers in Photoshop is definitely super, super important. Mm -hmm. I've worked on artwork where, you know, we've, we've bought art from like a super famous photographer. Her work was like brilliant, but it was like Rachel take all these snowmen and put them in repeat and my manager was like yeah yeah you're really fast get it done and I, I was known for being fast get it done by like the afternoon or tomorrow and when I opened up the file no joke there was like a thousand million like well not a thousand but there was a lot oh. a lot to make me want to cry like oh my goodness oh no like I was having like a panic attack and I also did it in photoshop which is great for repeats also but I, I I'm faster in illustrator I would say and then just naming the layers, like, oh, that's the twig, twig one, twig two, eyes. Da -da. You know, so if you can name as you go along, it makes life easier. And then when mm -hmm. you go to send it to a buyer or client, just send them the cleaned up version, you know? Um, things like another thing that I like to do, which I probably haven't done on this file, is see the swatches, is, you know, making sure that you, just let me unlock the layer making sure that you grab the swatch or oh, that that one's already in there but say we have this and you know mm. dragging that into the palette as well you know just deleting swatches that you don't need naming things correctly again I, I like to be someone who doesn't give people a bit of a headache really when they get my files I mean hopefully that that comes across when I send it to people they, they keep coming <laughs> They keep coming back anyway, so so hopefully well, that, that's a good sign. That's exactly what I was going to say, right? You want to set yourself up for success. So, like, I'm yeah. sure that this photographer, maybe next time when you were about to hire hire that like photographer, yeah. you're like, ah, oh, well, last time it did like cost us a lot of hours and money yeah. to be able to fix the file. So maybe that is just like a one-time opportunity and because you have not set yourself up to to get more um, engagements in that way so always think who could be on the receiving end um, of, of your file yeah, exactly so you know um keep your folders organized and um, everything that you do you know just naming things you know trying to make sure there's no typos again i do things like i'm just checking there is no typos in, <laughs> in my layers i did check them all today <laughs> I was thinking, oh goodness, um, just making it, you know, a little bit easier. Um, I also have mild dyslexia as well. So just me keeping things, you know, that bit more organized and capitals and it just, I don't know, it just stops me getting stressed in the, in the program and, mm. and, and things like that as well. And it doesn't mean you can't, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be like super regimented and, and not feel expressive and play around. I mean, as you've seen with my process, it is, it is, it is experimental. Like, you know, I, I, I image trace this and this, this bit is what I used in my final design, this bit mm -hmm. in the dots. And then in the demonstration, I created that bit and I actually was like, oh, why didn't I use that before? So you can be really expressive and work intuitively, but then at the end, when you do have to send on a file to someone, then be like super, super organized. So, you know, again, if this was at a trade show and exhibit, um, or to an agent um, or on a pitch document, I would kind of set it up like this or put it in a beautiful pitch. Um, if it was obviously showing the repeat tile, I could show the repeat here as well. This is the original um, the original kind of placement print and concept. And yeah, just, just making sure that you're super, super organized really. That is the key, right? To being a, a good and successful designer organization. Yeah. Like, because Definitely. time, time is the best resources you could ever have, right? <laughs> yeah. And I've learned the hard way in some ways. So because I used to with my design files, 
caught I'm honestly half of my designs years ago were like quirky flowers quirky circles quirky da, 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 quirky. I say like, I can't call anything else quirky so come <laughs> up with like design names as you go along you know this is Havana night because it's inspired by my love of um, Cuba mm-hmm. and Havana mm-hmm. and kind of the cultural influences or you know describe what you see is it I don't know um I'm trying to think of a really good name now something daffodil or retro daisy or mm-hmm. again with learning spanish and um, i started to kind of use um the spanish version with some of my file names as well because mm. it actually i think it sounds nicer so it's like oh that sounds way better like that it sounds more it just sounds lovely um or with plant names sometimes i will describe the plant but i will use the scientific name for half of it and then i'll have like my own little version at the beginning and then you can you can find your files then um, on your computer, like much easier. If I'm working yes. on a personal piece, I'll do like Rachel underscore PP for personal piece. And then it's like Havana night. If I license it to, I don't know, John Lewis in the UK, Paper Chase, a- any store, it would then have Rachel, um, I'd take off the, the PP, it would have Havana night and then underscore John Lewis if it's got a multiple license it will have John Lewis paper chase you know and then it matches Mm. up with my filing system for my invoices and things and then if someone comes to me wanting to license I've got like this bulletproof system that you know I I physically keep like a paper version I'm a bit old school in my filing system that way I'll have a digital (laughs) kind of coding way as well and then also, if I go to open up that Illustrator file and someone is wanting to license it, I'm like, oh gosh, it says such and such his name on it. Quick, check the license. Is it going to cause an issue? Is it available in this market area? So trying to organize as you go makes life easier because I wasn't like that at the beginning. I wasn't quite like that at the beginning. I got, I got better. But when you're like me and you've got absolutely millions of patterns, it's like, oh my God, where do you That's begin? The thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so tip to my younger self would be to spend a few more minutes naming my files that little bit better to save more time mm-hmm. like afterwards so we are at like, arriving at the end of this yeah. live it's crazy how time ha- has gone by quickly we have two questions so maybe okay. we can answer them of quickly. course of course um so we have ray here are your designs completely new or do you reuse objects from previous designs or patterns like to recreate new ones I, um, i'm assuming good question really good question so most of the time every piece is brand new However, sometimes like if a design isn't sold or it's sat in my archive, I might think, you know, I'm going to give that a new lease of life, recolor it, mix it with another motif, come up with another version. Um, Of course, if I sold the design outright, I'd have to make sure that the older version wasn't used because I've kind of essentially borrowed that motif for a new new piece because the copyrights are signed. If it's licensing, I can manage that much easier. It just depends, but I tend to create new pieces because I do so many different things. I don't get as much design time as I would like these days because, you know, but my my work priorities can shift. So soon I'll be full on designing in summer, which is great. So I don't run out of ideas. I've got masses of sketches that I still haven't worked up. So I kind of create as I go. That is great. And then we have an excellent question from Lindsay. If you were sending a pattern to a client would mm-hmm. you add any text explaining how you came up with the design sometimes in the folder i might show if the original sketch um i might um show the imagery you know with a color palette create like a style file or something with some notes on there because when they're promoting their the design in the range so you know some licensing companies they will pop your info in the bio, be quite descriptive with the designs and that that gives them then extra info. So there's no harm in in doing that. I do think it's a good thing, but you just don't want to overload them too much. Kind of chat to the person you're working with and see what their style is. Some people just want to buy it and don't want to hear off you again. Some want you involved in the creative process. So um, this Havana Night design like inspired my book cover and, and a big thing for me with the book was, you know, I want to be involved every step of the way. But some people mm. are just like, no, you know, it's just we're buying this or we're doing this. But, you know, you can sometimes get more involved in the creative process, have a chat with them and, and see where the journey takes you. That is a great answer. So you have to gauge like what type yeah, of information the different. clients, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when I'm hired, you know, as a freelancer, when I used to do a lot of commissions, I might be on a project that spans a week. Some of the buyers or managers want to check in with me. 
And other ones are like, no, I don't want to hear off you till the end of the week. Just show me what you finished. <laughs> and then because I tend to spend like a whole day filling a sketchbook, some on day one would be like, show us a print. And I'd be like, well, I don't do the prints probably till tomorrow. But however, I've got the sketchbook filled or so many pages mm-hmm. and then they get volume out of me. So, it, yeah, you've just got to gauge people, really. Well, um, Rachel, this has been amazing. Uh, you were so thorough in oh, like good. your full process uh the chat was hyped uh, and I think you had also some people who have been following your your journey because they were answering your question like, like their, oh, their own question so like there, there was a full conversation happening which was amazing so Rachel where can we find you Oh, yes. Good question. Thank you for asking that. So and thanks, everybody, for being absolutely amazing in the in the chat. I really appreciate it. And and for watching and for Izzy for being a brilliant ho- host as well. Oh, thank I think you. I think I've got a bit warm <laughs> doing this, talking a million miles an hour. So, um, yeah, you can find me over on racheltaylordesigns.com. This is where you'll find a lot of my artwork, the one to one creative mentoring that I do. Um, on Instagram, I my kind of company accounts are Rachel T Studio, Make It Design. I have a Rachel Taylor icon. Have the regular Rachel Taylor because there's a really famous Australian accent, uh, ac- ac- accent even actress. And yeah, it's not available, so I've got the little hyphen at the end. Um, Facebook, Make It Design, Rachel Taylor Designs on Twitter as well. And I'm quite new to using Behance, and we've set up a, a portfolio this week oh, on nice. there. And all of the links are on there as well. And with Make It in Design, as I said, you know, we have like a really cool podcast, you know, some free classes on there. So there's definitely, you know, a lot of insight if that's interesting to you. And we we really specialize in, in teaching Adobe software, in particular Photoshop and Illustrator. And that so do great. check that out as well. Yeah. Because you know, Absolutely. we have experts who, you know, share their tips as well. So um, for me, they've been really fundamental in my career and I want to let people realize that Mm -hmm. it's a lot more accessible and easier than you think absolutely well thank you so much your links have been added in the chat stay tuned to join Ari and Ben on a new episode of the Adobe Fonts show as we go through part three of participating typography basics thank you so much everyone thank you so much thanks for watching thanks Izzy and Adobe